from uh, New York uh, to Paris. Don't say you don't get to travel at uh, the Digital Innovators Summit. Um, our original speaker, Olive, uh, Olivier Royan, has had to remain in Paris on urgent business. So a very short notice uh, replacement, and we must be very thankful to that. And an excellent replacement, too. Uh, please welcome the senior digital editor of uh, Paris Match in France, uh, Marianne Mertens. Marianne. Hello everyone, my name is Marion uh, Mertens, I'm a um, digital editor. I have the very comfortable job of uh, building brick by brick the bridge between print and digital uh, people at Paris Match. So, you. Um, so this was Paris Match in 1949, and this is Paris Match now. Um, whereas editors of the past, uh, we're like captains um, steering ships towards one clear direction. Today, it feels more like spinning the plates. And sometimes, the plates break. Um, at Perry Match, uh, we feel that uh, one of the challenges of co to contend with is the different speed of news. So what is um, the job of an editor today? Uh, journalism, uh, managing the storytelling revolution, Audiences, uh, engaging and monetizing. How do you find and keep new active readers and want them to pay for your content? And three, technology, integrating news flow, providing content on multiple uh, channels. You can see the logo Match 360 uh, because two years ago we started a new project to bring our organization into a new world, developing a multi-platform way of telling the news. Um, we call it Math 360. Some people had suggested no paper project, which I thought was quite um, uh, brutal. So we call it 360, just to show that it's really the news that is in the center of, of it all. It's not um, only the platform, but it's the, how do you develop uh, a news throughout different platforms. Uh, we made changes uh, in the everyday life of the team with meetings during the day where print and digital work and build together. We have a big team of 80 people um, at the magazine and a digital team of 10 people, um, video journalists included. So we propose digital training courses to our reporters and photographers and people from the art department. Um, the question is um, how to take um, everyone aboard on a daily basis at the magazine and reach a new, younger audience while keeping our editorial quality both in slow news, the print, and fast news, web and mobile. So how do you go um, from the weekly to the moment? Um, well, our new um, project this year uh, we launched uh, is that. So you all thought Paris Match was a weekly, but it's a daily, um, because every evening at 6, we post Match Point, Monday to Friday. Um, it's only available on our mobile app, uh, Android and iOS. It's a very visual and fun news digest of the day, with six different items curated from different pages of our website. Um, each item is linked to a story. Uh, there's the cover, obviously what we choose to be the news of the day, hard news, people, feature, science. Um, then you have the quote, the exclusive or the investigation uh, story of the day, the slideshow, the number, and the video, uh, which can be a, vi a viral video buzzing that day or a video we produced. Um, it allows us to show the news with a Paris Match touch uh, and recreate that very special mix our magazine has always had uh, for the last uh, 65 years. Um, this, uh, 
This is the edition of Matchpoint that we posted uh, after the attacks on November 14th. We closed the magazine on November 14th, on a Saturday, uh, right after the attacks. And um, all week long, we had the possibility of having um, a daily uh, digest. And as you see, we, every day, our teams work uh, to make um, a Matchpoint um, edition. So it really adds, uh, it was really an add to, um, an addition to um, what Perry Match does every uh, day. And it's very motivating for the team as well because they won the cover. They're a very competitive team uh, and they won the cover. So if you get the cover of Match Point, uh, whether you're mobile um, or print, uh, it's, um, it's very motivating and um, it's exciting. Um, we also use this tool uh, to make uh, special editions. Uh, for example, the Oscars um, happen on a Sunday. Uh, the magazine comes out on the Thursday. So we uh, did a special Oscars edition on Monday morning. And we also have a great um, number of articles about uh, Serge Gainsbourg. So last, uh, about two weeks ago, there was the 25th anniversary of his death. And uh, we did a special edition. Um, with photos and um, articles from our archives and new articles. Uh, so it was um, a very good way for us to uh, be present on uh, something like that. Um, second, uh, sorry. Second project I want to talk to you about, um, it's a special operation we, reali we realized it was called Mater en Photo. In English, we call it Love Planet. Um, it was a giant live photo album which became a book. We decided six months before the UN Earth Summit uh, called COP21 in Paris, we launched this operation. Um, it was the first planet-related photograph petition we believe could influence decision makers taking part in the COP21. More than 15,000 pictures and statements were sent to our platform. Uh, you can see that. Um, the images were taken by amateur, professional photographers, citizen activists, celebrities. Um, and we first published a selection of photo every week in the magazine. Um, and then, uh, right before the summit, we put together all the photos in a 400-page book that uh, we handed over to each head of state and delegation attending the COP21. It was a promise that we uh, made to our users. And um, it's, um, so you see on these photos when we gave the book to uh, the president, uh, celebrities, Chief Raoni, um, and the UN um, general secretary. Um, this book was also given to the French National Archives to be kept as an historic testimony on how people in 2015 related to their planet and their environment. Um, third operation. So, as all of you are probably experienced, innovating is also about finding ways to bring your team aboard uh, your new project. So we try to help as much as possible any willing person to find the right, right tool to enter the intimid intimidating world of social media. At first, the reactions we had from our team was that they could not handle to be on every social network. So we made them choose the one they felt most at ease with and be acti active and engage on it. So here are uh, several examples on how our team embraced successfully uh, social media. Twitter. Uh, this is um, our political editor, Bruno Jeudi, who chose Twitter. He is now followed by, by more than 250,000 people, which is a lot in France, um, and regularly pushes live exclusives and photos from the field. Um, he's also a really good tweet clasher, so he can really bring great exclusive um, tweet clash, um, which um, are always uh, fun and create the news. Um, Instagram vintage. Um, we realized that we had real treasures in our archives, and the photo editor who was born at the magazine and really daunted by the web uh, was attracted by the possibility of sharing his passion for old-time photography, um, Perry Match Way. So six months ago, we created Perry Match Vintage. Um, we post two photos a day, um, and in these six months, we uh, had 10,000 followers and great feedback 
uh, and regram from these follow followers, including celebrities who uh, can see themselves uh, 40 years ago and love it, and their children, which um, is always fun. So I think it was a very positive thing to bring somebody from the print along to uh, digital. And um, with all these photos, we also realized that all these archive photos could be um, put in photo shows, and uh, so we developed a lot of those um, outside um, Instagram. Um, third try mentions. Um, as soon as it was available in France, uh, we started playing with it. Um, always bearing in mind that if you're live, uh, you'd better be in a cool place no one is, or you have... Um, to have special access to. So, I'm gonna show you. What I think of the show, I think it's beautiful. I think she's the best fashion designer in the world. I think she's wonderful. I think this collection was young, beautiful, witty, sexy, good humored, and beautiful. My girl, let's give it up. And you love her. I do. Thank you so much. So this is Paul McCartney backstage at his daughter's fashion show um, when our fashion team did several live mentions during the Paris Fashion Week. Um, and it was really um, great feedback from our uh, followers on, on Facebook. And um, the quality of the footage is not great uh, high res, but it's really exciting. And it's also something that we really wanted to work on is um, access, um, the access you can have when you're a journalist, and also that moment uh, where the star is not controlled. And you hardly see these days any natural thing with stars and celebrities, so um, it's, it's in a way exciting to be able to, uh, to show that, and our followers really, really liked it, and we had a huge uh, feedback, positive feedback after we did that. The last uh, innovation uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, I'll show you uh, the film and then I'll talk to you about it. Even if we are in, still in the very early stage, uh, we felt that it was essential for Paris Match uh, to be the first French media to uh, bring uh, virtual reality to its communities. Um, in January, we partnered with Google and provided 40,000 free cardboards um, to access an exceptional film on the ascension of the Mont Blanc in virtual reality. Uh, the film could be seen on the Paris Match app. Uh, a few weeks before it was, um, it was available, we um, asked people to register on our website to get free cardboards. 20,000 people registered. And um, 20,000 uh, other cardboards were given everywhere in France, packaged in the magazine uh, for free. And um, there was a Google map location system uh, to check where in your area in France you could find these special packages. Uh, we had a great, great feedback from our readers uh, who are you know, older uh, than people that would usually get interested in, in virtual reality. And um, they were so happy that they could make the first step uh, for free into that new world. Um, it allowed us as well to have uh, more than 10,000 people uh, download our app. So um, it, was a, it was a great experiment, uh, our first step uh, into virtual, real, virtual reality. Um, so all these examples um, to show you how much of a work in progress it is and uh, that it's not virtual, um, it's real work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Will you take a question if we have one? Yeah. Great. Okay, and we have a uh, first question right here, in fact. 
The microphone is on its way. If you could just tell us your name and organization. Thank you. Markus Schöberl from PV Digest. Um, the Matchpoint app, can you give us an idea um, on the business case? Is it a paid app? Is it advertising? Anything else? It's a, it's a free app uh, for readers. And uh, we want to, right now we don't have advertising, uh, but we want to, uh, we have the possibility of sponsoring, uh, having a sponsor, uh, um, sponsoring it, paying for it. Um, so that's um, really what we wanted to do is see if the design worked, if it was easy to use, and then get to another stage where it could be for a special operation, uh, something that um, could it be interesting for advertisers? So at the moment, if you're, you don't have to be a subscriber to get no. the app, you can, anyone you can get it. You go to the Perimatch app, and uh, it's somewhere on the left. And yes. uh, what we do is we push uh, every, uh, every evening at 6, we uh, notify people that yeah. the new uh, match point is. It allows us to be, uh, you know, to be present and to remind people, because they always forget. OK. Again, raise your hand if you have uh, a question, but a, a quick one that I'm very keen to ask. Um, we've heard a lot about editorial quality, the value of the editor. Have you found any conflict between the new need for speed and getting things out faster and, and, and in different formats and the quality control, the editorial oversight that, that the magazine has always been known for? Um, I think what, is, what was really a cultural difference is, is you know, Paris Match was a very uh, secretive organization, like the, the tradition. Uh, which was like a male-oriented tradition at first, was to really keep big secrets for exclusives and so on. When I, I got to, I started working for Prime Match almost 20 years ago, and at the time, the, the, you know, the big boss would, would hardly organize me meetings where we would talk about what the magazine was about. You know, we knew, talking to some other people, that what, what was the story. So openness was very important. I don't think there is, um, to answer your question, I don't think there are a lot of conflicts. I think it's a matter of timing. Um, is really about understanding that um, if you're doing a really cool thing on Facebook or on, web, on the web or on a newsstand, it's pretty much talking. And it was really what we tried to push to our team was that this, you pretty much, whether it's on the web or, or in the print, it's pretty much. So that was the big, uh, and it still is. Uh, the big uh, challenge for us to make everyone understand that, and also because a lot of people at Paris Match were literally born at Paris Match. Like I, I, I was, I've been at the magazine for 20 years. I'm a rookie. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for that. Um, so one more speaker to go. But first, can I ask you please to thank Marion very much? Marion, thank you.